We are six educators teaching at Morris Academy, a primary school of approximately 300 students located in Mount Pearl, Newfoundland. We have a background in primary, elementary, special education, technology, and physical education methodologies, supported by master's degrees in literacy. Tanya Clancy and Krista Lavalle teach kindergarten. Susan Witt and Donna Martin teach grade one, and Bernice Atkinson teaches grade three. Sharon Brophy is a physical education teacher and provides our school with technology support. Teachers in Action has provided the support and opportunity for us to work collaboratively and to practice inquiry-based methods with technology in our classrooms. Tom Walsh, a professional development facilitator with Teachers in Action, visited our classrooms. He supported the implementation of inquiry-based learning in science. Furthermore, our learning was enhanced through professional literature and learning networks within our school and province. Our kindergarten classes consists of 28 boys and 19 girls. Our grade 1 classes have 27 boys and 19 girls, and our grade 3 class consists of 11 boys and 10 girls. Each class includes a diverse range of learning needs and backgrounds. We believe all students can learn and experience personal achievements in science. We join Teachers in Action for the powerful professional learning opportunity in our educational quest for scientific literacy in our classrooms. Our focus area for this project was to motivate students in science through inquiry-based learning activities as we explore the needs and characteristics of living things. We wanted our classrooms to change from this... Passion. Past the... Anyone? Anyone? A tariff bill? ...to a motivating learning environment where students are actively engaged through hands-on, minds-on, collaborative activities embedding technology naturally and facilitating a fun, play-based atmosphere. Our research questions were... My plants are growing from the seeds down in the ground Soon they'll be showing how the plant world gets around Just plant a seed and when you're done give it air and water and a lot Sun. And in a few weeks or so, you know a plant will grow. Before we began the implementation stage of our project, we needed parental consent. During curriculum night, we discussed aspects of data collection, such as videotaping, interviews, and student work samples. All parents were asked to sign a permission form. As stated in the provincially prescribed curriculum guides, young children are naturally curious and learn by doing. When they actively engage with materials, equipment, and people in their environment, their learning becomes more meaningful. Science inquiry involves posing questions and developing explanations for phenomena. Students need to develop scientific literacy through inquiry, problem solving, and decision making to become lifelong learners and to maintain a sense of wonder of the world around them. Research states that inquiry is an approach to teaching and learning that strives to foster deep understanding in students by providing opportunities for active involvement in learning. Children are innately curious. They wonder, ponder, and experiment in their daily explorations with the world around them. Prior to our STEM project, we as educators were leaders and doers in our science classrooms, while the students were merely observers. This project has changed our methodology of teaching from teacher-centered to student-directed. Our classrooms have become environments where hands-on, minds-on learning occurs. Students engage in questioning, reasoning, developing understanding, practicing skills, solving problems, and building connections between their previous knowledge and new knowledge. Can you give us the verdict? Good? Yummy! 
In this STEM project, students used inquiry-based learning to investigate how plants develop from seed to plant in our classrooms and outdoor center. Students explored mathematical elements such as predicting, comparing, measuring, counting, and graphing. Student learning was evident as they collaborated and communicated their questions and results via the use of technology which was seamlessly interwoven throughout the project. Our incredible journey began with a whole group discussion of living and non-living. Students explored outside to classify objects in their environment and took pictures to document their understanding. Mystery bakes full of assorted seeds piqued their natural curiosity and provided a perfect segue into the needs of living things. Students I Wonder Questions supported our project as the students speculated that the items might be seeds. A classroom visit from Miss Debbie Preston, a local horticulturist, enhanced their investigation into the elements of what seeds need to sprout and grow into plants. This led to the exploration of various soils and what the plant needs in order to grow into a healthy living thing. Students got their hands dirty and were engaged as they were digging and making observations about the types of soil used for planting. After they determined which soil was best suited, students selected the seeds that they wanted to plant. From the moment their seeds were put in the soil, ownership for their classroom garden was ignited. Each student became a gardener, doing their best to make sure the classroom garden flourished. They took pride and gained pleasure as they observed the changes that occurred. What's happening? It's growing. It's growing. As with any project, it is difficult to control the outcome. We learn that things don't always go as planned. You can use the same seeds, same soil, and set the same lighting conditions and obtain totally different results. While some classroom gardens saw all of their seeds flourish into lush green plants, other classroom results were not as successful, only seeing a few of their seeds flourish. What were the variables that we could not control? This sparked discussions amongst classrooms and new I wonder statements were generated. Now, Olivia, what have we been doing in grade one these days? These are, we have some plants, and this one is the best growing because, as we try to draw a water drop, a sun, it has sun, water, and soil, and it definitely has air. This one doesn't have everything it needs. It doesn't have soil, but it does have sun and air. It's sprouting, as you can see. Is there anything else in there? Well, there's some seeds. They aren't really sprouting that well, but they are sprouting. This one has water, but no light. And it's white, because there's no light. I wonder and why that is. Plants need light, because if it doesn't have any light, it needs air and water in order to make the leaves green. That make the it needs water and air to make to bring out the color. And these don't really have any color because they don't have light. But okay. now they're getting a bit of light because they're not where we have them. These ones they are not doing very well. It has no water, but it does have light and air. Nothing else it needs. So I can't talk, mu talk much about the, those. This one is just soil and no water, but it does have air and sunlight, so that's not going to grow. Why not? Because they need the water in order. Like I said, with this one, they need water to make the, the plant grow. And if it has no water, it needs a lot, a lot of water. Because our other plants in our classroom are growing like these. 
if you can, the difference is white, one is white and one is green. Documenting learning was easy. Our iPhones became essential in capturing students' learning at any given moment. As educators, Google Drive was used as a common storage tool for preserving and sharing QR codes, student-created pic collages, videos, and photos taken by both students and teachers. Some of the activities the students engaged in were a field trip to Dominion to explore healthy food choices and examine food in its natural state, a walk through our school neighborhood to locate living and non-living things, and experiments which explored the needs of plants. The students also nurtured seeds into sprouts and helped them grow into plants. Students used iPads to take pictures and utilized apps to create, represent, communicate, and collaborate. Technology was also used for scanning QR codes to access books, videos, and songs. Some tools used were Linoit, Pic Collage, Powtoon, Toontastic, and Book Creator. We followed a mixed methods approach for our data collection using pre- and post-surveys, classroom observation, student work samples, interviews, and conferences. Individual class data was analyzed and recurring themes became evident. The data was compared and showed similar results. We found that there was an increase in student motivation, student engagement, and student achievement. We became facilitators as children engaged in inquiry-based learning activities that fostered motivation, engagement, and achievement. Science class doesn't exist as a separate part of our day. It is now interwoven into our daily routine. Our positive findings have led us to explore ways to extend inquiry-based learning activities in other areas of the curriculum. One of the challenges associated with teacher inquiry is time. Time to research, collaborate, and prepare. This is where being participants in Teachers in Action has been invaluable. This project has not only increased student motivation, engagement, and achievement, but has also changed our teaching. It has inspired us and given us a new passion for teaching and learning. It has allowed us to collaborate with colleagues, explore new methodologies, and embrace technology and new ways to deliver our program. We have come to realize that as educators, we can't have all the answers. It is essential to learn alongside our students to show the importance of lifelong learning. If the outcome is not what we expected, we can use it as an opportunity to reflect, explore, and to develop new understandings.